I missed a day this week. Got up early, took my shower, got all dressed up, walked out ready to preach. Jamie looks at me and says, well, you're dressed up awfully nice. And I said, well, yeah, I'm going to go preach. She looks at me and says, it's Saturday. <laughs> so uh, I almost started the Warden Seventh-day Community <laughs> Church yesterday, but I decided, well, I suppose we better get some work done on the house and stuff. And, and as I was changing into my work clothes and taking a look at all of the, the things that, oh, that's right, I'm supposed to do on Saturday, I thought about my yard. Now, my yard is... Um, it's not nearly as park-like as the church yard, which is so wonderfully maintained by volunteers. No, my yard's pretty rough. It's going to take a number of strategies to restore it. And that, of course, is probably running around in my head because I was thinking about today's parable. So if you will turn with me in your Bibles to Mark chapter 4, we're on a top 10 list of Top 10 teachings that Jesus taught, different parables. And Jesus taught, of course, a lot more than 10 parables. And I just picked 10 at random that I really liked. So I suppose you could say this is my eighth favorite parable. Uh, this is the, the parable of the soil. Or sometimes this is called the parable of the sower. But you know, this parable isn't about the sower. It's all about the soil. And... I thought I kind of knew what this was like uh, when I lived in suburbia, but now that I'm in an ag community, I have a whole different appreciation for soil that I never did before. Our soil here in Warden is so fertile, it, you can grow anything. But here's the thing. Jesus talks about the soil when he's talking in this parable of the soil, and we're going to look from verses 3 through 9. There are four different things that Jesus draws our attention to here, uh, and he goes through them pretty quick. Listen, he says, verse 3, a farmer went out to sow his seed, and as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. We're going to stop right there for just a moment. There are four kinds of soil, and the first one I want you to realize is the, is the path. The path is rough. This is rough soil. It's been compacted. Now, when I look at verse 3, I got all excited to talk about the, the sower because it says right here, that little thing, the parable of the sower. This really isn't about the farmer at all. The, the far, of course, the farmer sows the seed. No seed, no crop. But you know, this message isn't about the farmer or the seed itself. Just to be clear, the seed is the word that Jesus is talking about here, that the word is getting sown, and the farmer is the kingdom worker. Not just Jesus himself, but anyone who is sharing the gospel. And that does not necessarily mean has to be in a pulpit. When you are just talking about how God is good, you are sowing seed. One thing I know, everybody's got seed to sow. But Verse 4 talks about the path. This path is it's downtrodden. It's, it's hard. And you know, some people are hard because they've been stepped on for a long time. And I thought it would be kind of arrogant to, to just go through the parable and not think about, well, what are some solutions to this? How could we deal with this stuff? How do you break up hard ground, especially with hard people. And I think the solution is to soften it with living water. You ever put sprinkler out on dry ground and just let it go for a long time? The living water can harden the hardest heart. Soften with living water and persistent work. Uh, because if you just leave the ground uh, spongy but unturned, it's once the water evaporates, it's just going to get right back to hard. So there's got to be some work put in to soften with living water and persistent work. That's how we deal with a rough path. We'll keep going. Verses five and six. Some 
some of the seed, fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because it had no root. So this next thing, the path is rough. The rocks are rubble. I was thinking about all the work that, frankly, I'm going to have to do in, in the backyard of the clubhouse. That's what we call the new place, the clubhouse. And the very first thing I'm going to have to do is rent some big bin where I could dump all of the stuff that has been left in the backyard from previous occupants. I've got just rubble, garbage. I have gravel back there. I have wood back there. I have toys back there. I have non-working machinery that's been left back there. And all of that has to be cleared out of the way before I can get to actually trying to deal with the soil. There's a whole bunch of rubble in the way. And why that's difficult is if I tried to plant now, um, I couldn't get to the, the ground where it actually would make a difference. See, the, the difficulty with this soil here is that there's no structure to it. The, the, the soil pieces aren't all the same size, and so the, the roots don't really have anything to grab onto. And you know, some people are like that. They just can't develop because there's no structure in their life. There's nothing to grab onto. And so the solution for this one is to strengthen the people around us with substance, substance that matters. It makes me want to ask, you know, what are you speaking to the people in your sphere of influence? How are you encouraging them? What are you saying them to, to them that not only will just make them feel better, but actually build into their lives. Give something of structure to the people around you. The path is rough. The rocks are rubble. Let's look at verse 7. Just by itself. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain. Thorns are trouble. Thorns are trouble. You see, this soil is good soil, but too much garbage has been allowed to take root. Lives can become so infested with worthless plantings that no useful crop can grow. And so, this is a, a chance for us to examine what weeds are we allowing to take root and to grow. <laughs> and here's the thing that I don't necessarily like. I believe this is the truth. But you can't just necessarily pull weeds. I remember another parable that actually didn't make my top 10, but I'm going to kind of tie it in here. Um, a, a farmer planted a field and an enemy of that guy came in and sowed a bunch of tares, a bunch of weeds in the midst of that. And as the field started to grow, it became apparent that, wait a minute, that's not the same kind of plant. I've seen that in some of the fields around here. We'll be driving along and it's supposed to be, I don't know, all potatoes and you'll see one corn stalk sticking <laughs> right up. And I'm thinking, but that's not supposed to be there. Or if it is, that's the weirdest looking potato I've ever seen. <laughs> and the, they said, okay, what do you want us to do? Do you want us to go out there and, and clear the field? And the answer was no, it's, you'll damage uh, the, the good crops on the way to pull the bad ones out. Just let them all grow. We'll harvest everything and we'll sort it all out in the end. So it kind of requires us to know what is a weed and what's not a weed. And for me here in, that's a challenge. It'll grow like crazy and it'll have a pretty flower. And I go, isn't that a pretty flower? And somebody who lives around here like, that's a noxious weed. You can't have that. But it's pretty. It doesn't matter. It's going to turn into goat heads or something awful. <laughs> the impression is that thing will go up and kill you. You had better pull it out of the ground. And weeds that we allow to grow in our lives will do that. They will grow up and choke out any fruit that we might have. And so we have to be willing to pull them. Willingness to pull them is great. But what if you don't know if something's a weed or whether it's just a, something that might bear fruit later. And frankly, that's where others come in. 
That's where you share parts of your life with other people saying, I I don't know what to do about this. What do you think? Now, let's be honest. In our particular congregation, we have some old farmers. So talk to them. Moving on. Verse 8. Still, other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, multiplying 30, 60, or even 100 times. The path is rough. Rocks are rubble. Thorns are trouble. Loam, good soil, grows double. Yes, that all rhymed. (laughs) Double, or 30, or 60, or 100 times. Good soil produces crops. Good soil can grow, uh, can allow the seed to grow because it can germinate and produce. And the amount isn't the point. You'll notice that Jesus said it, it grows anywhere from 30 to 100 times. So if you, I don't know, in looking at your own life, feel like, well, I'm, I'm not the, you know, my life isn't producing fruit of 100 times or, you know, I, I might be lucky to get just a little bit. The amount doesn't matter. It's the fact that you're producing fruit that matters. All those little kids who are up here, evidence, evidence that this particular little congregation is not dying. I love it when it's noisy in here. When there's little murmurings and kids are talking and they're playing and, and maybe they're paying attention for two minutes out of the hour. Moms, dads, this is a good thing. Because they grow up in this place and what did they notice? The rest of you tuned in, paying attention. This must be important. Mom and dad and grandma and grandpa and aunts and uncles and a gazillion people who are shaped like grandmas and grandpas and aunts and uncles are here. And there there must be something of value here. And there is. And those little seeds, we believe by faith, are going to grow up and bear their own fruit. So the solution uh, for the thorns is to identify the weeds and remove the garbage. The solution for this loam that grows double is to harvest and replant, to keep doing what we're doing. If we want a larger harvest, then we, then we sow broader. But we do our level best to care for the crop that's growing. And that's what we're planting in our lives. I often pray a, a variant on this New Testament phrase that we would humbly accept the word planted in us that can save us. And, and the, the original phrase in the Greek talks about that the word saves our lives. Our, our soho is, is the word. That it actually can change our physical way of being. That we live now because of the word being among us. Why would we not want to share that with anybody else? Verse 9. Then Jesus said, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Are we listening today? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we, we hope we're listening. We're trying. And we know that we are not uh, (laughs) perfect farmers. Um, But in this parable, we're sometimes we're the sowers and sometimes we're the soil. And so Lord, if there is anything in us that is hard, break it up and soften it. If there's anything in us that's just rubble, Uh, Lord, we pray that we would be strengthened. Um, 
If there's anything in us that's just weeds that are going out of control, Lord, help us to uproot that and get rid of it because we want to bear fruit. All of that is a sacrifice that we bring to you. Use our lives to build your kingdom. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.